some put it on to commit all forms of sin. That is as a result of ignorance. You cannot put new wine in an old wine skin, neither can one stitch a new garment with an old one. A new wine must be put in a new wine skin and a new cloth should patched with a new one for it to last. If you knew word, where you are, and what brotherhood is, you would not engage in any sin neither will you soil your hands in any sort of vice. The Father has appeared physically in various troubles. You should endeavor right from today to abstain from evil so as to realize the image, power and the glory of God in you. The only one arrayed in the garment dipped in blood is the Father, and those who follow him are arrayed in white, they are his children who have conquered. Mere passing through a place, even without singing, but in your white garment, you get all evil forces subdued. If you were to realize, where you are and the type of glory the Most High God has given to you, then you would not have sought for the things of the world. Many people are scared of you because of the spiritual power which accompanies you. All the angels and spirits identify you easily by the white garment which you put on. This is why the forces, which want to overcome you, will first of all ask you to remove your white garment, before they will be able to deal with you squarely. Many members keep on clamoring for the holy oil and other ephemeral things instead of thinking of the white garment. A king is easily identified through his kinship regalia, a soldier is known, when he is dressed in his uniform, and in the same manner a police officer is identified with this police uniform. Therefore your white garment identifies you as a child of God. It is an embodiment of peace, love, emancipation, goodwill, prosperity, and salvation. We have to glorify God for giving us the privilege to wear this royal garment. Read the first Bible lesson again. First Bible lesson, Revelation chapter 3 verses 4 and 5. Thou hast a few names even in Sardis which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father, and before his angels. A symbol of the father. Three points are raised in the above passage. The first is, there are a few names in Sardis that have not defiled their garment, the second says, they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy, and the third says, he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, whose name will not be blotted out of the book of life, and therefore they shall be identified in the presence of the Father and his angels. Those promises are not made for those who are not worthy and who have not overcome. The spirit that inhabits the white garment is that of righteousness and power. Men and women who desire to commit fornication or adultery run away from you, and so do other evil spirits. That is the thing, all of you should be thankful to the Father for. And for the same reason, you should show gratitude to God and praise His name at all times. People would call you all sorts of names ranging from Obi's angels and so on, because of their diverse experiences in their spiritual encounters with you. The incident between Pilate and Caesar is a clear example. When Caesar issued an order for Pontius Pilate to be killed, the soldiers tried in vain to kill him. It was only when one of the soldiers informed Caesar, Pilate was clad in Christ's garment, which he acquired after the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. He further informed him, except Pilate was stripped of the garment, which he used, as his inner garment, no one would be able to overpower him. Therefore, for anyone to complain of the tribulation they have gone through in this kingdom is irrelevant. Without the suffering and the persecutions, you cannot qualify to be arrayed in white according to the scripture. You would not have had this kingdom on a platter of gold. The qualification for entry into the kingdom of God is not by wealth nor by pleasure, but through faith and righteousness. Therefore it is a mark of triumph, for you to appear in white. Until Brotherhood of the Cross and Star started to put on this white garment, no other church denomination, nor any other organization had ever been arrayed in immaculate white. It is the fulfillment of God's promise to his children. Having been found worthy and having been given the white garment, instead of holding it in great and high esteem, you rather look down on it. Everything in brotherhood has its divine significance. The tribulation we pass through signifies the purification of our souls through his precious blood and makes us worthy to be arrayed in white. A few feeble-minded ones in 1977, at the heat of the antagonism and persecution by members of other denominations, and the public, removed their white garments and either burnt them or hid them in the bottom of their boxes. Such ones could not be said to have conquered. 
It is you indeed who have conquered this generation, and the other generations to come. See the second Bible lesson below. Second Bible lesson, Revelation chapter 7 verses 13 and 14. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The manifestation of God's promise. It is because of the power in the white garment that the various church denominations now wear white garments too. But there is a difference between their white garment and the one worn by Brotherhood of the Cross and Star members. It is a manifestation of God's promise to his children at this time. You did not work for it nor did you desire it. It has so pleased God to have his promise fulfilled in you. Therefore you have to be proud of the white garment, for it is God's grace upon man. It is therefore incumbent on you to keep it stainless. One of our spiritual psalms says, If I pass through the blood of the Lamb I am saved. Another spiritual psalm says, No one should use the blood of the Lamb to do mundane work. Refrain from evil, as you possess this garment of righteousness. Yet another spiritual psalm says, O oh, the blood of the Lamb, if I use the blood of the Lamb to make a foundation around, no power shall be able to damage my handiwork. This explains why sometimes, even if your house is burglarized, the thieves will not make any attempt to touch your white garment. Read the golden text below. Golden text, Revelation chapter 19 verse 8. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints, the garment of all virtues. You have no other work to do other than to exhibit love, patience, mercy, kindness, truth and righteousness. Go ahead and teach others of the significance of the white garment. This is why he warns us, no one should use his blood for carnality. He made it clear also, no one can destroy the Lord's work. You have been washed clean in the blood of the Lamb and you have been given to wear a garment washed clean in his precious blood. Any person who says, no member of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star has ever passed through tribulation, is not sincere himself. This is why we are all saved, having been washed in the blood of the Lamb. These things do not come by chance and they should not surprise anybody. It is our destiny. This is why amongst the lots of people, we are the best and privileged few. While the people of the world find pleasure in drinking, smoking, and committing various vices, the members of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star fear the Lord, and they also abhor every evil. The world is filled with all sorts of evil and pestilence. This is why Brotherhood has nothing to do with the world. The only place in which oneness, humility, peace, love, mercy, and all other virtues exist, is here in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. These qualities are completely absent in the world. There is no church denomination where the members could engage in spiritual activities from dawn to dusk without complaining of tiredness. It is only in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star where one can find the real desire to serve God. It is also in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star where any form of problem or sickness could be solved and healed. May God bless his holy words. Amen. Thank you Father, 